We starting right off. Let's go. Was the Civil War story we were told a lie? Now, what I'm about to do is provide some information that could assist you with answering this question. I assume that many of you may be aware of the story that we were told surrounding the Civil War that took place in America beginning in 1861 and coming to a close in 1865 when the Confederate troops allegedly surrendered to the Union. Now I am saying allegedly because I would like for you all to question everything that you were ever told about this story and come to your conclusions after I share a little bit of information that you may be unaware of. Mind you that I'll be sharing more details about this in a later video, so there are no right or wrong answers here at this time. My focus is on making you think about those things that you were told were truthful and accurate and labeled as official American history. Now according to what we were told about the cause of the Civil War, it was said that the Southerners wanted slavery to continue while the Northerners wanted to emancipate all enslaved people and that this disagreement led to both sides wanting to harm each other. But what isn't so clear is who exactly agreed and disagreed with this alleged reason as to why war can be the only possible answer to resolve their differences. Who had the means and the capability to manipulate the public to choose a side? And why was it so important for the Union Hold States up. of America? I just want y'all to uh, let this marinate. I'm talking about, you know, the, that type of marinate that you make when you add the steak to it. And you, hey, shout out to the ladies that be cooking out there. The men, they gonna probably want some steak and marinate. I'm just, I'm helping the men out right now. And the ladies, I'm giving y'all some. But the whole point is this, right? I'm a little marinate. Who had the means and the capa I mean, capability to manipulate the public to choose a side. Don't forget that at this time, prior to the war, there was no president of the South, meaning strictly for the South. But if there was a disagreement in which they allege that there was a disagreement, who was at the forefront of that disagreement? Dang, wait a minute, it was political. It was political? Oh, so you're saying that the North is the Republicans and the Southerners was the Democrats? That's what you're saying? I'm just gonna look in the chat real quick. <laughs> I'm just I'm looking at the chat real quick. Who was that? Who was the one that was at the forefront to manipulate the public to choose a side? That was I'm talking about prior to the Confederate States even existing. I'm talking about the reason why they're allegedly claiming that again, the Northerners wanted slavery to be abolished and the Southerners did not. Was this a political move? Now I see Randy said it was the Democrats manifesting in a G saying Freemasons. Bobby said North. R. Larry said Quakers. All right. Okay. Travis, German bankers. Now, I, I just want y'all to understand. I want you to really pay attention and hone into that part right there. Prior to the Civil War occurring, right then, at that time, we had newspapers. Okay. As far as getting the message across, how was the Southerners influenced? to say, hey, we standing against that. We, we standing against their belief. How was the Southerners even aware of the Northerners belief? And then look, who was at the forefront of the Northerners belief to say, hey, this is what the Northerners wanted officially. And who was at the front of the Southerners saying, hey, the Southerners, this is what they want. This is official. I'm the main representative of the Southerners. Who was that? Again, that was prior to the Confederate States and the president being picked. All right, Turtle Island, R said Abraham. Very interesting. Barbara said traveling preacher. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, now I said newspaper. So if it's traveling by newspaper, I'm just letting that sink and I'm glad that y'all getting it all out. Don't forget that that's not, right now, reality, that's not made clear, is it? What we're doing right now is assuming we're using our imagination. Listen, because it's not documented as to who was at the forefront on both sides to say, hey, choose a side. We can name multiple politicians. Listen, we can name newspapers. But who was that one that said, no, 
This is what the Southerners want. Whose word are we taking? Okay. Jackson? No, no, no. Not yet. I'm talking about before the president was picked for the Confederate States. Before the Confederate States was established. When they were having an issue, alleged issue, the Northerners and the Southerners, who was at the forefront of each of them? Now, we could probably say Abraham for the North. But who can we say for the South? Who was at the forefront speaking up for the entire South? Saying, this is what we want. A lot of y'all saying pastors and churches. Okay, spiritual vibes say landowners. All right, generals. Uh, okay, so I'm going to keep it moving. I'm liking these guesses. But keep in mind, they guesses. To manipulate the public to choose a side. Choose a side. Choose a side. And why was it so important for the Union States of America to retrieve the 11 Confederate States of America that seceded from the Union? Why was the Union so zoned in on trying to get the rest of the states that seceded from them? Why was that so important? If they said, nah, uh-uh, that ain't it. We ain't falling for that. We gone. We up out of here. Why was it so important for the Union to be like, no, please. No, we need you. We got to get them. We got to get them, y'all. Come on. Employment? Okay, keep going. What happened? Bankers? Land? Capitalism? Taxes? I like these guesses. I'm going to keep it moving. And by the way, did you know that it was more than 11 states that seceded from the Union? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. More about that in a second. But first, let's go over the states that were allegedly involved on both sides. The Union states were Maine, New York, New Hampshire, Vermont, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Kansas, Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Iowa, California, Nevada, in Oregon, making it a total of 20 Union states. Keep in mind, that's a legend. And the Confederate states were Texas, Arkansas, Louisiana, Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, Florida, South Carolina, North Carolina, and Virginia, which brings the total to 11 Confederate states. But what you may be unaware of are the so-called border states and if they joined the Confederate States or stayed with the Union. These so-called border states were Kentucky, Missouri, West Virginia, Delaware, and Maryland. According to the Britannica Encyclopedia, there were also strong secession movements in the border states of Maryland, Kentucky, and Missouri. In Kentucky, a meeting of delegates declared that state out of the union mm -hmm. and in Missouri, a fragment of the legislature passed a succession ordinance. Kentucky and Missouri were admitted to the newly established Confederate States of America, mm. bringing the total of breakaway states to 13. Mm. But the action of both states was irregular. End quote. Okay, so now you are aware that it was a total of 13 states and not 11 that left the Union and joined the Confederate States 13. of America, they go that which leaves the so-called border states of Maryland, Delaware, and West Virginia. Even though Maryland did not officially secede from the Union, Maryland was not a free state. It was a slave state. Okay. So do you think they wanted to emancipate the enslaved people of Maryland? Of Maryland. <laughs> Now, Delaware remained neutral, and West Virginia was a direct creation of the Civil War when Union troops gained control over Western Virginia and forced a proposition of West Virginia to become an official free state under Union control in 1863, bringing the official total of Union states to 22 and not 23 as some may claim that Maryland fought on the side of the Union when Maryland was known as a slave state during this time. 
Now, I'm going to let that sink in. That was 20. 20. Hold on. 23. I'm trying to come back real, like right there. 1863. Now, they're trying to say that West Virginia was a part of it, but it didn't join the Union until 1863. Again, that's the same time period where we were told that the Emancipation Proclamation was signed January 1st, 1863. Virginia came a little late, didn't it? But you still gonna count them in. Okay, I'm just letting it sink in. 1863, bringing the official total of Union states to 22 and not 23, as some may claim that Maryland fought on the side of the Union when Maryland was known as a slave state during this time and did not immediately emancipate their slaves when Abraham Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation was posted on January 1st, 1863. So now that's 22 Union states versus 13 Confederate states, Allegedly. which will lead you to believe that the Confederate states were outnumbered in the population count of their troops. But if the Confederate army was outnumbered by the Union army, would they have gone about causing a war to erupt in the first place? First place. Mm. This isn't some war hero fictional movie. This was real life taking place. Why would anyone attempt to cause a war with someone when they are outnumbered, outgunned, or even outclassed by the opposition? Yes, mm. people would go out and die for a cause, but what's the point of going out to die for that cause if it wouldn't be anyone left to pass the torch to? Mm. Did you know that the majority of the original U.S. Army resigned and joined the Confederate Army instead? All right, hold up. Before we get into that, give me the top five biggest states of America. Top five. I want to see the largest states of America, the top five. Okay, Texas. All right. California. The top five, Florida. Now, and, and here's the point that I'm making here. Out of the top five, how many of those fives, five states, were in the Confederate? Allegedly. Let's go here. Just in case you need to see this. Notice this picture, though, y'all. They claim that Oregon and California was a part of the Union States. D.C., Washington, D.C. is over here. I want y'all to explain to me how Oregon and California, if this was true, had to come through the Nevada Territory, the Utah Territory, Colorado Territory, or New Mexico Territory, and what, go head up with Texas and maybe all the rest of them? Where was California in this for real? Troops were in California. Like, how, how was you D.C. all the way on the other side? Look, how, how are you governing California? I mean, did they have a plane to go straight across? We talking about 1861. Did they call them? Hey, y'all, we need y'all to handle Texas for us. Wait a minute. Okay, plane, calling them. Here's another thing. California is huge, number one. Let, let's, let's minus Oregon real quick. California is huge, one of the biggest states. Do you think any of the troops that's allegedly native to California are going to be familiar with the Nevada Territory, Utah Territory, Colorado Territory, New Mexico, any of these territories, and then Texas, you coming in blind, ain't you? That's like me telling you to move to California without setting it up for you. Meaning, hey, I got a house for you. It's in such and such area. You're going to be good. Everything going to be good. There's a job set up for you. You mean to tell me you sent troops from California on a mission blind to a territory they never visited before? Keep this in mind. If they had troops in Cali, if they had troops in Cali, how do we know if they have or have not visited Texas before? All of them. And Texas is a big state. I'm just letting it sink in now. Now, these other states over here that were claimed, you know, to be a union, 
uh, in the union rather. I also sooner or later I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna put this out, but you could go behind me and check. I want y'all to realize that a lot of these territories were also combined. These little black lines that you see are imaginary, meaning that somebody laid claim to those un unincorporated lands and named that territory that name. That does not mean that they are separate. Same thing with every other state, with every other state. But again, if I send you from D.C. to Cali, you never been. How are you going to survive if I ain't got you set up again? If I'm sending you from Cali to Texas, how are you going to win anything if you don't know nothing about Texas? You're going in blind. I'm going to just let that sink in. We're going to continue. Now, I'm sure there's a bunch of stories floating around about the number of troops that left the Union Army to join the Confederate Army. And they would try to make it seem as if Abraham Lincoln wasn't struggling to find or garner new troops to join his army of the mm. Union. Mm. OK, now listen, when the Confederate Army was established, there was a drastic shortage of troops with the Union Army to the point where Abraham Lincoln was forced to ask Congress to garner non-military trained volunteers to join his army and fight on the side of the Union. Was forced to ask Congress to garner non-military trained. I'ma let this sink in. Now, Congress could be lying about that number, 75,000. They could be. But then again, we got millions of foreigners coming over here right now. What did Trump say day before yesterday? Or was it last night? It's over a million. They coming over here for a reason. Still to this very day, right? Abraham Lincoln said, oh, my God, we don't have enough troops you think the Confederate Army going to sit there and wait for them to get some troops? No, no, hurry up. We're going to make it even, y'all. We'll wait. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. We'll give you some time. Go ahead. Go ahead. We'll turn our back for a second. Make sure you don't got no Army trained people with you. No, 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 no. Don't do that. Get some volunteers. Get some Get some foreigners. That's all we're going to allow. The Confederate go sit and wait. <laughs> Okay. Volunteers to join his army and fight on the side of the Union. The majority of these volunteers that enlisted in the Union Army were immigrants from France and Germany that recently migrated to places like New York and Pennsylvania. Ooh, I bet y'all didn't know that. The majority of these volunteers were immigrants from France and Germany, having recently migrated to New York and Pennsylvania seeking asylum. Uh-oh, takes us back to that California question. Wait a minute, if they ain't have no troops but they had to get volunteers, how did them folk, listen, how? Uh, again, <laughs> let's, let's go over it again. New York and Pennsylvania. You mean to tell me, hey, I need 13,000 of y'all to go to California and fight and represent California. Wait a minute, how? New York, Pennsylvania, how you getting to California? Oh, no, wait, 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 you had enough troops in California? See how that's not being told? This is real easy. It's not being told for a reason. Uh -huh. New York or Pennsylvania, Germany and France, language barrier. Oh, como tape tu? Bien, merci, bien, merci. Now, we need you to shoot that weapon. Uh, uh, we, we, we. They don't know what you're talking about. Hold up your weapon, soldier, right now. Uh, uh, uh we, we. They, they know what? They just recently came to New York and Pennsylvania. And they ready for war? <laughs> huh? Think they was lying to you? volunteers that enlisted in the Union Army were immigrants from France and Germany that recently migrated to places like New York and Pennsylvania, for example, looking for hot meals and a steady income. Mm. And again, these people were not trained in any fashion in military combat. 
The majority of the troops that joined the Confederate Army were professionally trained and combat ready. From well, look at how big that gun is. A combat. The majority of the troops that joined the Confederate Army were perfect. That gun so big is sitting on his lap and his lap. And you gonna mean to tell me that you gonna handle somebody like this? Not only do they got machetes, he got pistol head, pistol head. He got one right here. And they got this big musket right here, bruh. You, you, huh? And you sending untrained volunteers to go, huh? Here's another thing. Notice how it's a knee jeep. What he next to? Personally trained in combat. Uh-oh. Next to a Caucasian. Do he look like a slave to you? You mean to tell me he they gonna hand a slave pistols, a machete, and a musket? Woo! Huh? He look afraid? Nah, he look like he ready. He trying to get this over with. That Caucasian look afraid to me. Oh shit! Um, his eyes wide open. The need you looking like? Yeah, I got this shit. <laughs> it ain't seen shit. You see this big ass gun on my lap? That's what it looked like to me. Yeah, let's hurry up and get this over with. Go ahead and take this picture. I'm ready. I'm ready. Mean to tell me what? Think that boy not ready? He woo. And keep in mind, he is the one that got his hand on that mother, that thing right there. Huh? And look at how he got his pistol position. That's that quick draw position. Whew. Huh? Think our boys was at the Cowboys here? I'm trying to tell you. Quick draw position. Ready to fire. You're already loaded. I'm trying. Uh, but, but hold on. But wait. Let, let, me, let me stick to it. They say it. That they sent non-military trained volunteers from France and Germany to go fight them? Professionally trained <laughs> and combat ready. From well-respected and experienced generals uh -oh. to high-ranking officers, uh -oh. the Confederate Army was the original U.S. Army. I, I'm just saying, wait a minute, wait a minute. If he was a slave, I'm, I'm going to just, we just scratch at the surface. If that Niji brother was a slave, why he standing up and got his arms on them? If this was about trying to abolish slavery, but the Southerners ain't want to do it, something that adding up, is it? I'm just here to make you think. So dance. Yeah.